Hello and welcome to masterclass number four. This one is minimalism and fitness. And I'm so excited to cover this topic because it's near and dear to my heart. Minimalism is near and dear to my heart. And so is fitness, as you all know. And uh, I want you to also um, be aware I'm going to be switching between, not switching, but like looking and glancing between two screens because I'm also recording this for the YouTube right now as well. Um, Cool, so let's get started. First of all, I always like to issue some type of disclaimer and just let you know that this is generalized advice. Please speak with your physician before embarking on any new fitness, nutrition, exercise, health journey. Um, also, if anything that I cover today is triggering to you or sparks um, feelings or emotions that feel a bit overwhelming, that shouldn't probably happen to, with today's topic. But if in case it does, I am absolutely free to chat in the DMs uh, for YouTube. I'm free to chat in the comments or you can absolutely jump on my website, which is listed l3method.fit and send me um, a contact form or an email or book, um, book a complimentary intro call, whatever you would like to do. That is what I'm here for. That is the... Like, that's what my career is all about, helping you be fit, um, but also making sure that the emotions are going at the same, t same pace as the fitness journey or else we won't have last and sustainable results. Cool, so let's jump into the topic of the day. First of all, let's cover what minimalism is. Many of you know what it is, but um, for those of you who don't, minimalism is essentially the disciplined pursuit of less. It is the creation of space in your life by decluttering and removing all the non-essential items so that you can have room for the things that really do matter in your life, the essential things, the things that make a life worth living. Um, also, the minimalists who I have digested so much of their content over the years, they're amazing. You guys have probably seen they have um, a couple of Netflix documentaries out. They have a wonderful podcast. Um, one of the members, there's two of them, has several books out on, this, on the topic. So what the, they coined this phrase, which I think is brilliant, um, love people and not things because the other way around never works. So what we're gonna do today is tie in that methodology, the, that thought process, into your fitness so that you can get where you're going effectively, quickly, and safely, and just leave out all the stuff that doesn't really matter, all the busy work in fitness, because that is a thing. There's a lot of busy work that happens in fitness. And if you tell me, just go to any gym and you know come back at the same time day after day so you can kind of see the members who are there in a routine day after day, week after week, and you'll notice that some of them are doing all the fit things, but they're not becoming any more fit. And so we want to avoid this. And one way to do that is to apply the principles of minimalism. The second thing I want to cover about what minimalism is, I really would love to weave in some um, parts of essentialism. So on the surface, minimalism and essentialism look very, very similar, but they're not they're not quite similar. Um, I would say some differences include, I mean, they, they do definitely like run common threads, but essentialism um, can be very much applied to all ways of thinking, all ways of planning out and systematizing your career. Um, essentialism can go into um, how you make every single intentional decision throughout your day, how you, um, decide what is essential and what is not. And a true essentialist, you will notice because they're the ones who aren't speaking up quickly in the crowd. They're the ones that are standing by the sidelines doing much more listening than speaking. They're the ones that are not necessarily always vying for the spotlight, but they're calmly waiting for their turn. And then when they take their turn, it's with so much intention and so much precision. Minimalism when people first take their glances at minimalism for the first time, it looks like a lot of um, emphasis on the material. So we are decluttering our lives. It's, a, it's not a ma matter of organization. It's a matter of literally getting rid of junk in your house, junk in your closet, 
Uh, minimalism makes things easier as far as decision making around what to buy, what not to buy, what to consume, you know, meaning like what's going in your mouth and then what to consume, meaning what are, what's the content you're digesting every day um, and how to spend your time. And again, that then goes into essentialism. So there's, there's common threads for sure. Uh, but we're going to probably stick with the word minimalism just because that's what I titled this masterclass and that's what you guys voted on. So um, let's first of all, look at uh, when you're starting your fitness journey, or maybe you're starting a new leg of it. Maybe, I mean, it would be kind of silly to say starting your fitness journey for many of you, because, you know, many of you maybe played little league or, you know, um, were in the army or uh, did a, a pageant of some kind, or you, you get my, my, my drift, did a, did a 5k at one point. So there, people have had elements of fitness woven into their lives but then maybe have taken a break. So we'll say the next leg of your fitness journey, starting fresh, starting anew, what do I want to accomplish this time around? And so that's what we really start with when it comes to minimalism and as it applies to fitness. The first step is to clearly define your goals. Set your GPS. If you don't know where you're going, you're never gonna get there. If you don't know what you want out of your fitness, it's not gonna get accomplished. And we can't be satisfied with just the answer of, I want to be healthy. That's a great goal. It's a great motive. It's, it's for sure something that you can say down the road after you've done this other work, but to just say that right off the bat, it's, it's, um, we're going to be hard pressed to find an individual who can, um, get where they want to go. If they have a lot of, if they're very unhealthy and they want to get healthy, there's just, there's a lot more in there that, a lot more steps before you're going to get to like that healthy place where then you can just say, I'm maintaining my health. One step, if you're very unhealthy, is to look at uh, what you're eating. Another step is to look at how you're moving or not moving. The next step is to look at your sleep quality and how you can improve that, your hydration, and then your stress levels and your management of those. And that goes more into the EQ, of course. So let's clearly define our goals. Let's get a vision and let's get a vision that really excites us. And don't be embarrassed. You know, some people have shame around um, the superficiality aspect of like wanting to be sexy, wanting to be ripped, wanting to be hot. And I, I get that. There is a lot of shame in our society, depending on where you come from and what your background is. And maybe, you know, it's either religious or it's just like upbringing. There's, there are different factors that come into play with shame and guilt of any kind around food body um, and just like your personal, how you view yourself and your goals. But I'm here to tell you that it's not shameful to want to be attractive. It's not, it's very, very natural. It's very normal. And if this is something you vibe with, cool, continue. If this is something that just is too touchy of a subject for you, okay, then maybe cherry pick uh, this masterclass and maybe you'll take something else that's helpful from it. But um, if that is a goal that really motivates you, go for it. If the goal that motivates you is like, I want to be around for my kids to graduate college, you know, get married, have children themselves, become a grandparent, like I want to be around for the long haul, or I want to be a great example for my kids. Um, maybe it's you know, I want to get this job and you're in an industry where aesthetics are important. Um, what else could be really motivating? Um, maybe you went to the doctor and you got a prognosis that wasn't favorable. Maybe you are, you know, in the class where you're right on that edge before you're pre-diabetic, um, you know, something of that nature. Whatever it is that is driving you, shape your goals around that. Okay, so now we have clearly defined goals. We have a very clear vision. That is automatically going to eliminate my next point, which is stop trying to accomplish everything. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of that. I have this happen all the time. I have clients that say to me, okay, I want to be really, really ripped. Like I want to have really toned abs. I want to have a bubble butt and I want to run the New York Marathon. Okay, well, uh, we get to pick what is a higher priority. Now, there are 
certain individuals with a uh, specific DNA, like they, they've been predisposed with certain genetics where they can run massive, long, frequent distances, which is what is required to train for a marathon, unless you're going to do no training. And I, not a lot of people are willing to do that. It's pretty painful. Um, but if you want to train for a marathon and you want to keep size on your legs and specifically your glutes, so if you have round, shapely, bubbly glutes, there is muscle there, yes, but there's also fat. Um, and if you're running long distances, what can happen is your body will take away from that area and utilize it for fuel, and it will change the type of muscle that's dominant. So when you run sprints, fast twitch muscle fibers are the dominant muscles that are getting you to that finish line. When you run long distances, like 26.1 miles or 26.2, excuse me, 26.2 miles, which is a marathon, then you're, you're activating other types of muscle, a slower twitch muscle. So that muscle looks different. It looks flatter. It doesn't look as bubbly and shapely as a sprinter's bigger, quicker to exhaust muscle. Um, also, when women run marathons, they, when, I'm sorry, when women run long distances, what often happens is, um, and I have some theories on why, um, there's this type of shape that can be created uh, in a woman's torso. It's a very boxy shape. So whereas before she may have had like curves, she may have had um, like a, a, a waist that cinches in and then like there's a differential between the hip and the weight, uh, the, excuse me, the waist and the hip and the glute. Now there has been, it's been replaced with a boxier, more rectangular shape. My theory, and I haven't, I definitely not, I, I, I definitely haven't gone to doctors or scientists to like figure this out for sure. But my theory is those long distances require, um, they require a type of core to be activated over and over those oblique muscles to be engaged in a certain way that they become more prominent. Um, and so they, they build, you know, obliques are a muscle. So they build out, so they go out, 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 out. And then that's what creates that boxier shape. Now, here's my point. You can have um, <clears throat> a certain circumference of your hips. You can have a certain height with your glutes, but if you don't have proportions are everything, right? When we look at things, we look at them by their proportion. So when we don't have complementing the glutes, that cinched waist, then the glutes can appear flatter, even if they haven't. So the combo, combo of those two things happening to a woman's body and not every woman's body, but to many um, will diminish that second goal from happening. So I hope that was, that was a long example, but I hope that makes sense of like, try to pick what the higher priority is. I have another really specific example. And, and I, I pick these because this is what clients have come to me with over and over again. Um, a man who has a lot of lower back pain, possibly from a, um, a um, not a herniated disc, but a bulging disc uh, in their low back, maybe L4, L5, L3. And they have some pain, but with a lot of like, you know, stretching and um, maybe chiropractor, physical therapist work, counter strain, different modalities, one of those upside down chairs, they can get themselves to be in a place where they're relatively pain-free to live their day-to-day -day life because they don't want surgery at this time. Fine. That man also wants to be shredded. Like he wants to have no pain. He wants to have a ton of muscle. Okay. And he also wants to be able to do CrossFit style or slash lumberjack style slash um, Navy SEAL training style workouts. So I'm talking climb ropes, um, do, you know, butterfly kicks in the sand for an hour, um, do, you know, overhead squats that turn into, um, oh my gosh, I'm like losing my phraseology. It's been a while since I like have been around a CrossFit environment. Oh, uh, what are these called? I, I forget. Um, but yeah, like, or, you know, just a squat to press, whatever. Um, and doing all the things that are the kipping style pull-ups, doing all the things that are involved in CrossFit, box jumps, all of that. Okay, so this 
example, this man gets to choose what is the highest priority for him. Oh, and let me add another little like thing. He's in his, let's say he's in his early 30s, early to mid 30s. So this man um, gets to decide. He can have no pain and he can be ripped shredded. He can't also have, um, have a, like proficiency in those style of workouts. He can't be like chopping wood and not potentially put his low back at risk. Um, and, then, and then those styles of workouts aren't necessarily going to guarantee that he gets shredded, but we can pretty much give some guarantees for um, pain being taken away and to get shredded because we can focus on those other areas like getting lots of sleep. Um, we can even add in another component because this so commonly happens. This man works around the clock. He works 70 hours a week. So he wants to accomplish all of this, but he doesn't want to get a lot of sleep. He doesn't want to eat perfectly. So we get to decide. Remember, so it's your life and it's your body. And that's what's so beautiful. You can always figure out what the top priorities are for you. If the top priorities are work and um, being pain-free, then that's what it is. Then we can work and create systems around that but we have to toss out the things that are not essential. So this is how we start to apply minimalism to fitness. So number one, clear, clearly define your goals. Number two, stop trying to accomplish everything. Number three, pick a plan that is conducive to your goals and feels good. Don't try every new fad. So find some things that you really truly enjoy and do those. Now, yeah, now, um, with that said, there may be some things that you don't love to do, but will get you to your goal. They won't completely get you to your goal, but they are an important factor to getting you to your goal. So let's just say someone wants a six pack, but they don't really like doing abs. And then they just generally want toning and like weight loss everywhere else. So that person can accomplish that by doing two ab focused workouts a week that are 20 to 25 minutes, like probably 20 minutes. And then they can go on about their life and work in other workouts that are things that they enjoy. Maybe they like to surf, maybe they like rollerblading, maybe they enjoy cycling. So they can do those. So now we have two ab workouts. They don't love so much, but they're gonna do them twice a week. So make it like minimal, the amount of stuff that you hate. Like don't pile that stuff on, mix it in with stuff that you love because it's gonna keep you going. And that's what creates sustainability. So then we have, two workouts a week that are maybe outdoor things like they love cycling. So boom, cycle twice a week. Now we're at four workouts. Now we get to pad in two other things that are going to be conducive to their goals. Maybe the person loves to like do upper body lifting workouts. So there you go. One workout there, you're at five days a week. And then a sixth workout can be like maybe a hike with the family or friends or something that is again, very enjoyable and something if they don't like hiking, it's not going to be enjoyable. So pick something else. It's something that they enjoy mixed with a couple of things that they don't love so much just to make sure everything we keep moving forward. Okay. Um, and then when we're like stripping away what's non-essential and we're stripping away the non-minimalistic things, we can always go to those five factors that I mentioned in probably every masterclass. Again, in no particular order of importance, nutrition, exercise, sleep, water and stress levels and your management of those. These five factors determine the way you look, feel and perform outside of your genetics and any medications that you may be taking. So you can look at those and then create customized, personalized planning that works for you. So minimalism is about what works for you. It's about personalization. Don't do things just because everyone else is doing them. Like I said, don't try every new fad. Don't just try things to try things. Don't necessarily try things just purely always for entertainment. Like if that's a goal, I want to be entertained by the fitness aspect of my life. We can absolutely work that in. Um, if that's the only goal, great. Then you can do any fad and every fad. But if it's only one of the goals and you have another goal, which is like lose 20 pounds, sometimes we have to forsake the entertainment by just focusing on what's going to get me there quickly, safely, and effectively. Cool? All right, so you can build around that. All right, nutrition-wise, what, what are going to be my top 12 to 15 foods that I enjoy eating 
that are healthy for me and are conducive to my goals. Meaning, do they have the right, you know, macro breakdown? Do they have the, you know, are they alkalizing? Do they have potassium, water, um, uh, obviously protein, the right carbohydrate and fat um, ratios. <clears throat> and then stock your kitchen every week with those foods. That's gonna make your grocery shopping so minimal and so budget friendly and so within your means in all ways. And it makes it makes a system out of it. It becomes brainless. Okay, I love these five dinners. Make them until you get sick of them and then throw in a couple more and take out a couple and then go from there. So that's kind of the way to eat um, minimally, but still fully, like with full enjoyment and, and being satiated. Um, and then pick the modalities, parameters, and physical materials for all five factors. So let's pick another one, water. Some people love having like a big sparkly like water flask and that's what motivates them when it's sitting on their desk to keep drinking water and to make sure that they get it all in. My personal way of accomplishing my water goal, this is something I started doing a long time ago. Many of my clients do it as well. Here you go. It's um, just to make sure I've done a half gallon by noon. So if I've done a half gallon of water, 64 ounces by noon, the, I make it easy for me to win. So the rest of the day is taken care of because when your body gets used to drinking water, it wants more of it. And surprise, surprise, if your body gets used to anything, it's going to want more of it. So if your body has gotten used to sitting on the couch, it's going to want to sit on the couch. If your body's gotten used to exercising every morning, you're going to start feeling weird after a month of not, you know, of exercising to not get up and do your habit, do your thing that's become habitual. Um, so there's that little like hump to getting there, but then once you got there, you're good. So the easiest way to get over the hump of water is to just make sure you get four 16 ounce glasses or flasks, water bottles, whatever, four 16 ounces in by 12 PM. Now, some maybe um, variants to this, or if you are, you know, working at night and you have a different sleep schedule, you'll have to flip this around to make it personalized for you, of course. And this is true for everything here. Um, but breaking that down even more completely, when I'm waking up in the morning and I'm going through my AM routine, which is a series of stretches and stuff for my like stretches for my face and stuff, I um, am drinking my first 16 ounces, wa ounces of water while I'm doing that. Then when I finish, I'm drinking my next 16 ounces of water. So I've had a, a liter of water by, which is 33 point whatever. So I've had like 32 ounces by um, typically 6.30 AM. And then if I go work out, that's easy. And most of you, I think will agree, like it's easy to get the rest of your water in when you're, when you're working out. Cause that's when people usually say they want it. Even if they don't naturally love water, they love it while they're working out. And make it again easy for you if you love room temperature, if you love cold, there's all types of wonderful systems today. There's all types of like gadgets that keep your water cold or whatever temperature you want it to be. There's ice, like whatever, whatever you need. Um, and then, so that's like an example of a physical material to make it easy for you to win, like pick your flask or whatever, stick with it. And uh yeah, so that, now I'm at the, the three 16 ounces. And then by the time lunchtime hits, by the time noon hits, I just have my last of the four. And then the rest of the day, I'm just, I'm naturally gonna have water. And then I'll get my, whatever my goal is, 96 to uh, a gallon, 128 ounces in, no problem. All right, let's move on. You guys can kind of get the gist with all the lifestyle factors. Um, make sure your setting feels good. All right, this is another huge tip if you wanna have a minimalistic fitness regimen. So what do I mean by that? If you're working out at home, if you're working out outside, if you're working out in a gym, make sure your setting feels good. Again, every action in life is preceded by an emotion or a feeling. So if you want something to stick around for the long term, meaning you don't wanna just lose 20 pounds, but you wanna keep that 20 pounds off. And you know that losing that 20 pounds was partially accomplished by the exercise that you did. So now you have to figure out how to keep doing that exercise. Well, you're not gonna do something that you hate forever. You're gonna do it for a short period of time and then you're gonna, you're gonna spiral out, you're gonna, you're gonna burn out. So do something 
first of all, that you enjoy doing, so you'll keep doing it. And when you stop enjoying it, pick something else you enjoy. You don't have to do the same thing for the rest of your life. You just have to do things that you enjoy, that fit seamlessly into your schedule and just feel good. But along with that, the setting is equally as important. And sometimes people don't realize this. They'll start skipping their workouts and they don't know why. But I enjoy working out. I love lifting weights. Why am I avoiding Planet Fitness like the plague, you know, or whatever gym you go to? Why am I avoiding Crutch or Gold's Gym? Like, why am I just not getting myself there? And when we, we have a lot of busyness and chaos in life, sometimes when we slow down, take a deep breath and check in with ourselves, we start to realize what we're feeling and why those feelings are leading to inaction. So if the setting doesn't feel good, we'll figure that out. We'll be like, oh, it's because I actually hate that freaking gym because that weirdo is always there stalking me or because it's grungy and it's not clean and I feel like I'm gonna sit down on a piece of equipment and get infected with something. Um, or I don't mean to laugh, like this is a real issue, um, but these are examples or, you know, I love my gym, but the only time I can go is when they're at their peak hour. So it's so busy and I feel really uncomfortable standing in line to wait for a piece of equipment. I feel really uncomfortable asking people, oh, can I work in with you? Can we like do, you know, can we superset the, you know, whatever, not superset, but can we like put our sets together? And then you have to readjust the machine to fit your, you know, settings, how tall you are and how much weight you can lift. I get it. So if the setting doesn't feel good for any of those reasons, typically it's people, time of day, temperature, safety, like meaning, you know, is stuff dirty, grungy, is the equipment broken, or just sometimes it's stuff that you can't explain unless you start going into like the metaphysical. It just doesn't feel right. So all my empaths, right? Our last masterclass was empaths and fitness. Empaths will pick up on this immediately. It doesn't, it doesn't have a good vibe in here. It doesn't feel good. So if any of those are the case, get a new setting, figure it out because you're not going to keep going somewhere that doesn't feel good. And there's a good reason for that. I'm glad that you don't. That's, that's a way that we stay safe. There's something there. We get to pay attention and listen to that and honor it. All right, next up, create a balanced workout schedule pretty much like self-explanatory. Create something, and we already touched on this, create something that's balanced, meaning if you want to lose 20 pounds and carve out like your shoulders um, and get big quads, well then you know that you're gonna have a shoulder day in there. Um, maybe blend that with some chest because the front delt or, you know, is tied in with your chest. You know that you're gonna have a leg day where you focus on anterior movements, right? Like quadriceps. And you know you're going to have a few days where you're just burning calories. And even that can be broken down further because ideally, if you're trying to lose weight and you have a somewhat compromised metabolism, doing a blend of steady state cardio, whatever that's going to look like for you, whether it's cycling, whether it's hot yoga, whether it's gardening, I don't know what type of shape you're in, um, whether it's um, jogging, whatever, blending steady state cardio with sprints with short winded movements. So whether that's sprints on land, swimming laps, um, sprints on like the, the bike, um, battle ropes, these things can be more like the quick, quick to exhaust under 30 second style cardio like blasts. So having all of those in your week, if that's your goal, lose fat, shape your shoulders, shape your quads, define the goals, right? and then create a balanced workout schedule. You obviously don't wanna work out your shoulders five times in one week. I know that sounds like obvious and silly example, but hopefully that like sets off like an aha because um, you're not going to lose all the weight you wanna lose if you are just focusing on your shoulders, right? You'll get really built out shoulders, everything else will go by the wayside and then you're more prone to injury. Um, protect the asset. Here's our next big thing. So I borrowed this straight from the book, Essentialism by Robert, excuse me, by Greg McEwen. I think I said his name right, McEwen. Um, he says, I think it's the name of a chapter in the book, protect the asset. And what that means is don't skip out on your sleep. Don't skip out on your healthy foods, your nourishing, you know, 
you're nourishing food, you're, let food be your medicine, um, your water intake, protect this physical vessel. This is your biggest asset in life, protect it. You know, sleep is like the new, it's like, it's like a status symbol. I'm also borrowing that from the essentialism book. Um, it's, it's like the mark of someone who's made it now. Like I figured out how to enjoy my life. Well, ding, ding, ding. It's not a necessary evil. Having sleep is so necessary for prolonged enjoyment of activities, prolonged lifespan, delay or elimination of diseases that will come on later in life. You're not noticing this stuff right now if you're young, but this is going to happen. It's, it's highly likely that it could happen. Let me rephrase that. As you get older, as you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s, um, 40s even, if we don't sleep, if we don't um, eat healthy, this can be you know, something that really adds up in the future. If we don't stay hydrated, guys, if you're not drinking water, I mean, you want to talk about, I've, I've, I've witnessed people not drink water their whole lives, then start drinking water like in their fifties or sixties. And it was too late and they got kidney stones and those are so painful. So you can't just undo these things. If you've been doing unhealthy stuff and not treating your fitness in this essential minimal way for decades, it will add up and you can't just like counteract it and oh okay now I'll start drinking water it sometimes it's like too late and the body just says okay well you've treated me poorly for so long I can't keep doing all the things I do for you every day I can't keep like working hard for you and diligently keeping you safe and healthy if you're not going to you know hold up your end of the bargain a bit Okay, declutter your supplement regimen. Oof, all right, so one big thing on your fitness journey, this is actually module one of the L3 method, is it's all about clearing out your kitchen. It's, it's a kitchen clean out and it'll feel so good. I know it doesn't seem like it matters, so just have a little faith with me on this one. It doesn't seem important, but once you get all the expired supplements all of the foods that are not conducive to your goals and not healthy for your body, once you get all that crap out of your kitchen, you will feel like you are more deserving of the body that you want. I'm not kidding you. You will feel like a weight has been lifted. That stuff in your kitchen, just like stuff in your closet, even though it's not physically with you while you're moving through the world and operating throughout your day, it's kind of with you. It's like, oh, like, who am I? I'm a person who has clean kitchen cabinets. I'm a person who is organized. I'm a person who throws stuff out when it's no longer needed. I'm a person who's like on my stuff. I'm on my A game. Or, I mean, I'm a good person. I am. I'm a good person, but I'm a person who's pretty disorganized at home. And I'm a person who doesn't want to have people over because I don't want them to see all the stuff in my cabinets. I'm a person who's a little bit ashamed of these years that have accumulated with dust in my kitchen, in my pantry. Nope, we don't know her. We don't know him. We don't know them. We can get them out of there. This is not who we be anymore. Okay, cool. Uh, <clears throat> home workouts versus gym workouts versus outdoor workouts depend what depending what le level of minimalism you aspire to. Okay, so let's talk about actual equipment. And that includes like, if you have a sweat wrap, if you have like a sauna suit, as well as gloves, as well as dumbbells, straps, um, ankle weights, pull-up bars, BOSUs, stability balls. I'm like looking at my own equipment. The list goes on and on. So be discerning. Don't just pick up something that's like a fad. If you can, try it before you buy it. Like go to a gym, go to a friend's house, go to a physical store. If there's any left, go to a target and actually like try out that piece of equipment before you go ahead and buy it, purchase it used if you want to. And like when you go on Facebook marketplace and then you go drive to pick it up, try it with that person before you actually buy it, something of that nature. Now that's if you're doing home workouts. If you want to be, so like a, a real strict minimalist by definition is someone who owns less than a hundred items. 
sometimes even way less than that. Someone who can get up and move and go at any point. They don't have this entire like material life that they have to haul off and pack up and take with them. If you are more in that camp, you're probably going to want a gym membership because then you can, if it's a franchise, you can work out anywhere across the country. Sometimes, you know, many times you can just show up, clock in and do your work and get out of there without needing to have any material goods in your possession or just a pair of gloves or a towel or, you know, a pair of sneakers. Um, if you want to do outdoor workouts, it's going to be like, it's going to be what you want. So let me go back again to that example of like clearly defining your goals. If you have a lot of low back pain, you have a strained disc, a bulging disc, um, but you want to be really fit and strong. You may need to go get a gym membership because doing an outdoor workout with like dip bars and push ups and pull ups and the rings and, um, you know, barbells and like lugging those around and weight sleds. They're not for people who have low back pain. It's easier to make sure you're getting your muscle groups in and you're stretching and you're being very safe and you're not increasing the pain, increasing the injury, the bulge back there. If you're doing more accessory movements, not so many compound movements, compound movements are when you're working multiple joints. So if you're actually, um, doing the leg extension, if you're doing, you know, you're doing movements where you're seated inside of a machine. And I know some people are like, but that feels so geriatric. I just want to like do my thing. Okay. Well then you got to get surgery or you got to get, uh, you got to, you got to work through, you got to have pain in your life. You have to risk that injury. I'm just, I'm being really, really real with you guys because I see it happen so much. The weekend heroes, you know, people who are like sitting at a desk all week and then sitting in traffic and never stretching, never doing any personal care work around their pain. And then being flabbergasted when they go do a soccer tournament on the weekend for like adult soccer and they're running, 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 running. And then like something happens and they like just twin something at a certain angle and then they get really hurt and then they're in a lot of pain. And it's like, well, you have this body seven days a week. You have, you ha you're always with your body. You can always take time, you can always take a few minutes to care for it, to stretch, to warm it up, to do the proper things. And there's so many um, resources out there today. There's Move You, which is an Instagram account. There's tons of wonderful physical therapists on Instagram, on YouTube, creating free material for people to stay safe and to um, decrease the amount of pain that they live with. Uh, okay, so I got off track. What level of min minimalism do you aspire to will determine like how much you wanna do a home workout, a gym workout or an outdoor workout and like how much equipment you wanna have and then just gauging that against your particular goals. Okay, be intentional and don't be afraid to trade and sell. Work your flow in all areas, equipment, clothing, trainers, apps, videos, etc. <clears throat> so I do, I do, yes, say stick to your vision, stick to your game plan, but I also want you to have some flow, but make that flow intentional. This is part of essential, essentialism, minimalism as well. What is your intention? And it can change. You can change your intention. But what is my intention before I download this new app? before I veer off course from this program that's going to work for me if I just stick with it more than a few days, like if I just put in three weeks of consistent effort towards this one thing that I've invested in, whatever that thing is, I will start to see the payoff. But if you're just hopping around from thing to thing to thing, yes, that's cool for flow, but it's not good for results all the time. But it is nice to have a little bit of flow. So if you, and what I mean by that is you ch check in with yourself. Okay, this isn't working for me, me anymore. Meaning like I'm consistently hating this every time I show up or um, this isn't get, getting me results. So then you scale back, you create a new game plan or an edited game plan, and then you sell whatever equipment you don't need anymore because you have this new game plan. And then you buy used if you want to. Um, and you can buy some new clothes if 
the clothes that you were wearing weren't motivating you and you looked frumpy and you'd rather look in the mirror and be excited about what you're seeing when you're working out because it's going to further drive and motivate you. Again, there's that shame piece there. You know, we may feel a little shame. Oh, I want to be sexy. Oh, that's a bad thing. But then you get to do your emotional work around that, which we don't have time to talk about today. Um, then here's another thing. Workout buddies. Be discerning. Essentialism is all about relationships as well. Um, minimalism with respect to friendships, which friendships are really adding value to your life. And it's a give and take, right? You're adding value to their life and they're adding value to yours. If it's just a one-way street in, in one direction or the other, we need to check on that. That's not going to be a sustainable friendship. The same applies to your workout buddy. Make sure that it's someone who's going to show up you know, like you are. And if you have a workout buddy currently and they're constantly like dropping out, um, they're distracted, they're lazy, they're no showing or ghosting you, you can step back. And yes, that's their problem, but you can also step back and be like, why am I okay with this? Why have I attracted this? Why, how is this a mirror for something? And it may not be a mirror for how you're showing up. You may be diligent and focused and consistent and always showing up and actually completing the workout in excellence. But maybe there's somewhere else in your life where you're, there's a, a low hang, like a low underlying belief that you don't deserve to have someone showing up for you the way you're showing up for them. Maybe there's like a self-worth thing that's at play there that you get to um, turn over and look at, not with judgment, with neutrality, but look at and and see like, you know, why, why have I been okay with this? Why is this person, um, like we're always teaching people how to be in a relationship with us, right? So what have I taught this person to, uh, to make them think that this is okay? Um, and then on the opposite side, if you don't have a workout buddy and you're thinking about getting one, be really discerning, be really, really minimal with that. Meaning like, like for instance, I, I regard, you don't have to do, do it like this, but I'm gonna give you a perfect personal, bleh, personal example if it helps you. I regard my workout time as sacred because I mean, that's, I, I can go on and on as to why, but that's my sacred time. Therefore, I only work out with a select, a select few people. I don't just work out with anybody. Um, I take it seriously. You don't have to, but that's just me. Um, so I'm very, very discerning, uh, with who I train with, who I allow into my space during that sacred time. That's a big deal to me. Um, I take it seriously. And, uh, if the person doesn't the same, like if they don't honor that on the same level that I'm honoring it, it's not a fit. So that's where I'm at with, with that. Uh, be intentional before every workout, be essential by being here now. So a, a great minimalistic approach is to slow down for a second while you're speeding out the door to do your workout and just say a quick mantra to yourself, create something, create a sentence or two or many that fires you up that you can read off your notes or on your, on your laptop or something before every workout that gets your brain right there, right where you need it to be to have an outstanding workout every single time consistently. Create a system around amping yourself up for your own workout. Cool? Uh, donate all the clothes that don't make you feel like a bomb ass king or queen. <laughs> I don't know if that's like my, the trendiest way to say that, but, <laughs> but it's true. Like get rid of the workout clothes that don't make you feel like you're all that and more. Like you are a billion dollar body and that's it. And if you don't feel like that, that's okay. But if that's what you want, you have to start dressing like it now. You have to start like, you don't have to, but you get to start wearing clothing while you're doing this awesome thing that you're doing called exercise that makes you just feel like, like you're here on purpose. Like you're, you mean business. You don't take yourself seriously, but you take what you're doing seriously because it's, it's, it's a big deal. You're making yourself healthy. You're standing out from the norm. You're deciding not to be average anymore. You're deciding not to have a basic body. You're deciding to have a bomb body. <laughs> Your body is already beautiful and it's already perfect because it was created and it was made for you. So that's, that's in and of itself the truth. But 
to up the wattage, to up the, to up level, like how you're showing up in your physical form, you know, start doing that with the clothes that, that you're wearing. And you don't have to spend a ton of money. You can just go on Poshmark. There's like such great deals on there right now. I feel like a lot of this masterclass has been about like donating and, um, buying and selling used. I don't know. I didn't mean that. Like you can totally buy stuff new if you want to. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to give helpful tips wherever I can. Um, okay. Have your five to seven outfits lined up, paired and ready to go. Okay. This is a nice little hack. Go in your closet and put together five to seven workout outfits that make you stoked to put them on. Like when you see that outfit and it's completion, you're like, yep, I'm going to rock that. Oof. The gym is not ready for me, like whatever. Um, so if you're a girl and you're wearing like a sports bra, a crop top and a pair of leggings, put those three things together on a hanger and like hang them and that's one outfit and then repeat for five to seven. If you don't have five to seven outfits, but you wanna work out five to seven times a week and you only do um, laundry once a week, there's there you go. This can be another cog in the wheel. So this is where we get to be minimalistic and say, there's a system here, boom, boom, boom. Now I don't have to think about it. Because if you think about your workout outfits and you're like, I don't know what's going on, what to wear, it takes up time. And then it's an excuse for you not to go. Eliminate that excuse. Eliminate the excuse that you didn't do laundry like twice a week. You know that you have the amount of workout outfits that you need to complete a workout the X number of times a week that you set as your goal. Okay, book more time than you need for your commute, your shower, etc. cetera. Um, part of a minimalist nature is to not be rushed, to not be late, um, to only focus on and give time to what is essential, what is important, and just leave the rest out. So if, if you're finding it really hard to get to your workout and get home and shower and there's commuting, figure out a way to buffer extra time in. If you have to make your resting your rest breaks in between sets a little bit shorter. Um, if you have to wake up a little bit earlier, if you have to drop off a child 10 minutes earlier, things like that, like figure out as long as that's safe and everything's cool and they're being watched. Um, whatever makes sense for you, figure out a way to have space and breathing room so that you can, again, this is another thing that will amplify the, the enjoyment of the workout. We want to create as much pleasure as possible. That will create sustainability. If you're enjoying something, so if you're not enjoying it, one reason can be the setting, like we said. One reason can be the actual workout, um, like we talked about. Another reason might be you just always feel rushed. I've noticed that when I don't feel rushed to do any type of activity, I enjoy it so much more. That's true of this master class right, right now. It's true, true of everything. Um, if I have just given myself time and space to sink in and just really enjoy, then it's, it's good. Okay. Another thing I want to say is that something that's not minimalistic is to do this. That's not minimalist. It's not minimalism. Like, ah, oh, I, I did really good for two weeks and then I just destroy everything. And then I did really good for a week. And then I just ate like crap and didn't exercise at all. Boom, boom, boom. I did really, really well, but I pushed myself too hard and only got five hours of sleep a night. So now I'm sick with the flu and now I'm way behind and all my muscle went away. This is not minimalist. This is just drama. This is fitness drama. We want none of it. So I'm giving you all the different ways to cut out any of that excess drama, to cut out any factors that we don't immediately think of when we think of like, how can we sustainably stay on our fitness A game? Um, if you're confused on what to prioritize and or cut out of your schedule, go to the root intention of each planned event or task. Okay, so maybe you're like, I just have no time to eat healthy. Well, go to the root of that. What is taking up your time? If you, if you are having confusion around what's a priority and what's not, what's essential, what's not, go to the root of each, like look at your day and write out everything that's taking up your day. And then go to the root emotional reason behind why you're doing every single thing you're doing on a given day. And then it'll make it abundantly, hopefully for you, it'll make it abundantly clear what's actually essential and what's not. 
and then you can start to make cuts. I, I know I'm a fitness coach, so I'm obviously going to say this, but I think it's essential to protect the asset. I think it's essential to be healthy and fit because if we are, everything in life gets a little bit easier. Everything in life becomes something we can conquer, we can manage, we can figure out. Our bodies directly correlate to the effectiveness of our brains. There have been so many studies to prove. There's another book on that. It's called, I forget. Oh, it was written in the early 2000s, I think. Um, but yeah, there's a book about um, how if we move, it's scientifically pr proven um, that we can be smarter. So if we, being smarter just be, means being able to clear out the junk from our minds and focus on the, the tasks that are really important and having more um, access to more of our brain, both the creative and the cognitive um, logical sides. So um, movement, hydration, proper nutrition and sleep and not having so much stress all help us be smarter. So I think it's essential to be fit and healthy and strong. Uh, last one is include time for play. We may think that runs counter, but it doesn't. Like I don't have time to play. I just want to be, um, I just want to be fit. So that means I have to do push-ups and I have to do bicep curls and I have to do squats and I have to um, eat asparagus and chicken and that's it and that's all I have to do. I understand the confusion. I understand why we think that's the way that we're going to be um, fit and we're going to stay that way, but it's not the case. If you don't work in some play time, I promise you, if you do things you enjoy that feel playful and almost non-productive, they are so productive, so much so you can see visible physical differences in people who put play into their life. They feel and look lighter. They have they have this like lightness about them. And also, if you're indulging yourself in that way, you're not going to feel this like crazy need and desire to indulge yourself in the kitchen at 2 a.m. with the pudding and the frozen yogurt or whatever people eat when they're indulging. You're not going to feel like so self-extracted. I got nothing out of this day for me. I worked so hard for everyone else. I gave and served and gave and gave and gave. My cup is empty now. I have nothing left. If you allotted some time for play, for just some like, oh, take a load off, relaxing, whatever play looks like for you. It could be dancing around the room. It could be meditating. It could be reading a fictional book. It could be um, like, sh like um, window shopping on the internet. It could be um, running around, you know, with a kite in the park, whatever play, whatever lights you up, if you give yourself that, you're not going to care as much about going through the drive through at Del Taco after work and getting the thing that you know is bad, but ooh, it's so decadent, because you already gave yourself some decadence earlier in the day that were not, that was not calorie based. Does that make sense? So we have less of a chance of derailing our fitness efforts if we do some silly, what seems like non-productive, really is productive playtime. And that's also something that's helpful for our brains as well, our cognitive abilities. Okay, I hope that helps you guys. There's some wonderful juicy tips, I hope. And um, let's see, oh, I've already, so just a quick heads up on uh, masterclass number five, I've already written it out. It's called feminine, femin, femininity. <laughs> Femininity and fitness, so stay tuned for that one. And I'm making that the next one instead of the vote because out of, I think, the four or five ones that I gave you guys choices on, femininity and fitness came in right second after minimalism. Minimalism won by like one vote. So I'm like, okay, a lot of people want this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that the next one. So that'll be coming up soon, stay tuned for it. And also I have a couple more days running on the L3 method um, sale. So if you're a woman and you've been wanting to lose some weight and get in tip top shape, or maybe you're trying to put some weight on, like in the form of muscle and get some just body fat off, like exchange the composition of your weight, right? If that's what you're looking to do, um, it's a 12 week VIP program. It's for the, it's for ladies, not for the guys. Uh, and it's absolutely incredible. And it's my, it's my flag, flagship program. And, um, you'll get to do a lot of private work with me and you'll get to do, 
um, a lot of small group work and there's modules and there's customized diets and um, customized workouts to your body shape and metabolism and genetics goals and all that stuff and taste buds and budget and priorities all the things so check that out at my website l3method.fit the link is in the bio and book a free complimentary intro, intro call if you're interested in joining that and that's it i love you guys and i will see you soon Mwah.